I'm Bill Dutton, the director of the Oxford Internet Institute. Um, all of us at the OII are absolutely delighted to host this conference. And in collaboration with, I don't think we could have many more collaborators and fit them on the slide, but the uh, University of Auckland has been key from the very beginning. NetSafe, the New Zealand's government-backed internet safety group. Uh, the Watson Institute for International Studies at Brown University and the parliamentary group, Urim. It's really gratifying to see, I mean, we've been working on this for a year and to see this uh, come to a realization today is, is uh, gratifying to all of us. Uh, I, you all know that it's just a very short number of years ago, less than a decade, when all the talk of the internet was uh, the new, new promise of this new, new thing. Uh, the focus on, was on, um, with a great deal of hype, the focus was on the promise of the internet. Students would be able to access a treasure trove of information. Researchers could collaborate seamlessly from around the world. Citizens could organize more effectively and lobby their representatives, obtain new services without waiting in queues and lines. Um, and small and medium-sized businesses could all of a sudden have a worldwide audience. You had images of the rural craftsman becoming a global entrepreneur. So many of these visions, uh, I think, have indeed been realized in, in, to an incredible degree. Uh, our Oxford Internet Survey and the use of the World Internet Project, uh, it's really clear that many of the ver early visions of the Internet have become uh, become the rea reality. Uh, you have, uh, the internet has become central and it's had a transformative role in many aspects of everyday life, government, business, media, and science. However, in all the excitement of the new, new thing, uh, many forgot that the internet, like other information and communication technologies, from the mobile phone to the pager, uh, are two-edged swords. Uh, we find that today, more and more, discussion of the internet, mobile phones, and other new media is, is actually focused more on the dark side than on the promise. So instead of envisioning the future of use by students and researchers and citizens and politicians, we're often too, maybe too often, uh, focusing on stories of its use by pedophiles, terrorists, spammers, hackers, fraudsters, and scam artists. Um, it is, I, we think, and part of the raison d'etre of this whole conference is that we think it is absolutely important to recognize that information and communication technologies like the internet are a two-edged sword. They can be used and they are used for good and bad purposes. I once wo wondered if many of my colleagues in academia, I called them uh, somewhat jokingly as e-ostriches because they, they refuse to see the degree to which the internet was becoming embedded in the everyday life of students and faculty. They'd say e-learning is not relevant to me, but it's changing exactly the way they do their work. And I now wonder um, today if many in research, in business, in industry, and in government have become somewhat e-ostriches, uh, failing to look at the, look squarely at the dark side of the communications revolution. Some are ostrich-like in that they think that this will just go away if they don't pay attention to it, I think. Some fear that giving time to the dark side of the Internet will tarnish their own image. Um, but I think, of course, on the other side of the coin, there are journalists and those selling protection that could very well benefit by trumpeting the dangers of, lurk, of people lurking online. And so we need a neutral meeting ground where we can draw disinterested conclusions that are independent of government and commercial influence. And we think that that is exactly the role that universities and that this conference should fulfill. Uh, with the help of practitioners and academics and people from business and industry, um, we hope that um, we can get a realistic assessment of the actual societal implications of this promising new technology. We need high quality research and candid discussion to understand the nature and scale of the problems so that we don't over, under, over or underestimate the promises and the threats or over or under scale approaches to their solution. 
And we need an open and broad discussion, not only of the scale of the problem, but that we need to appreciate the value conflicts and the tensions and the trade-offs inherent in many approaches to solving them. For example, how, how do we really balance individual freedom and national security in, in real concrete terms? Anonymity might be a basic right that is absolutely essential to freedom of political speech and expression. But can we authenticate who is online in some instances to enable some services and some security? Should we trade our privacy for trust online? Or will threats to our privacy undermine our trust in online services? Uh, post 9-11, post Madrid, post London, uh, how are citizens, public officials, rebalancing these conflicting values and interests? And, and what effect will this have in the coming years? As you know, many of you, that the mission of the OII is to conduct high quality research that on the social implications of the internet uh, that will help shape policy and practice. And this conference promises to contribute to this mission. And it does so by informing and balancing debate about the threats as well as the promise of the internet. I'm sure that discussions here will illuminate the scale of the threats as well as the trade-offs inherent in many proposed solutions. And I suspect we will also illuminate areas of ignorance and the kinds of research needed to better inform policy and practice. I want to thank all of those who contributed papers, who sent them an absolutely tremendous uh, range of topics, and the participants, all of you who have come, for helping to support this mission of the of the OII and this conference. Well, with that brief introduction, uh, it's my honor uh, to introduce the Vice Chancellor of the University of Oxford, Dr. John Hood. The Vice Chancellor came to the university first as a Rhodes Scholar uh, to read for a DPhil in management studies, but he returned in October of 2004 as the first person in Oxford's 900-year history to be elected to the Vice Chancellorship from outside uh, the university's current academic body. Now, prior to coming to Oxford, Dr. Hood was Vice Chancellor of the University of Auckland, one of our partners in this event. And, and prior to his uh, role at, at uh, the University of Auckland, Dr. Hood had a very distinguished career in business. Having myself arrived at Oxford only recently, at summer of 2002, uh, I think from my personal perspective, I've been most impressed with uh, the speed with which the Vice Chancellor has studied the university, understood it, has sought to tackle the tough problems, and focused on the financial vitality of this great university, uh, and, and focused on ways to maintain and enhance the excellence of, te of teaching and research through a variety of innovative initiatives that he's already undertaken. Vice Chancellor. Thank you very much, Bill, for your uh, words of welcome. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you here to the University of Oxford and to this important conference focused on safety and security in a networked world. I'm certainly not an expert on this topic, or I should say on the many diverse topics that this event brings together. However, no educated person in the world <coughs> can help but realize the significance of the agenda that you will be addressing over the next three days. As Bill has noted, seldom does a day go by that we're not faced with ominous news stories linked to the internet or related new media. The same powerful features that make the internet a promising tool for distance learning make it a formidable tool for those of more malign intent. Children can gain access to a treasure trove of books, jokes and games and just as readily to undesirable material. So, how can we protect children, students, households, businesses, and all well-meaning individuals who use the internet without destroying this powerful new medium or compromising other cherished values in ways that we may deem unacceptable? How do we balance cyber rights and responsibilities? These are the kind of global problems and difficult questions that scholars working in universities are well placed to address and indeed must address. Increasingly, 
Scholars are finding they have to move beyond the safe boundaries of academic disciplines in order to grapple with the challenges of these real-world problems. The nature of these problems dictates interdisciplinary approaches. The study of the internet is typical. As the Oxford Internet Institute reminds us, the internet study requires legal, social, business, ethical and technical perspectives, among others, from within the academy and also from outside. I am pleased, therefore, that this conference has attracted local and international representatives of all of those constituencies. The Oxford Internet Institute has been enabled by the vision of its benefactors, most especially Dame Stephanie Shirley and that of its host college, Balliol, and the master of that college, Mr Andrew Graham. They too have well understood the interdisciplinary challenge that the study of the internet poses. Oxford has an impressive record of multidisciplinary approaches to addressing critical problems of policy and practice. A more recent example is the generously endowed James Martin 21st Century School. The goal of the school is to formulate new concepts, new policies and technologies that will make the future a better place to be. Initially, the school will focus on such issues as the changing age demographics, the migrations of peoples, ethics and bioscience, the future of humanity, the spread of infectious diseases, the threats posed by climate change and e-horizons. The Oxford Internet Institute is a participant in the last of these and this conference is themes, one of those to be considered. Several years ago in Auckland, Liz Butterfield of the New Zealand Inter Internet Safety Group, an NGO, and the local police commander, Howard Broad, visited me at the university to persuade me that my colleagues might develop an interest in internet safety. Professor John Hosking, as head of computer science, was quick to pick this up. Well, Liz and John have now already run two successful conferences in New Zealand. They had the idea to run a similar event in their antipodes, the United Kingdom. So I wish to thank them for their inspiration and for all they have done in association with my colleagues here at the Oxford Internet Institute to help it in meeting its own international aspirations. May I wish all of you great success with your dialogue. It is very important. I regret that I'm unable to stay, but I shall indeed look forward to hearing from both Bill and Vicky about the key ideas that arise over the next three days. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. Now it's uh, my very great pleasure to introduce the chair of the conference, Vicki Nash, uh, a dear colleague of mine who, who uh, has done an exceptional job in bringing together this conference today. Uh, Vicky's going to provide an overview of the aims and objectives of the program over the coming days. Uh, she's probably the least uh, likely to uh, tell you about herself, so I should say that uh, uh, Vicky is uh, uh, as a, a research and policy officer at the OII. Uh, in that role, uh, she, is, she aims to ensure that the research that we do at the OII is is as uh, as well as possibly linked to policy and practice. As you know, this is one of the most challenging aspects of academia today, to make these connections between academia and academic research and policy and practice, and vice versa. So uh, I thought that this conference, and I, I believe that it is the case, that it's a perfect role for Vicki and, and from her role at the OII to bring research in this area together with, uh, with uh, this policy and practitioner group. Uh, Vicki received her DPhil from Oxford where she read politics. She worked at the Institute uh, for Public Policy Research in London uh, before we were able to attract her to come back to Oxford to take her present position. So let me uh, take this opportunity uh, while I have the floor to uh, thank Vicki Nash for, uh, uh, and her advisory committee which she put together for all the hard work and good judgment they put into organizing the event. And, uh, Vicki, you'll have, have to tell us about the next few days here. Okay. Thank you. Bill, thank you very much for a generous welcome. Um, 
It's fantastic. I can't actually even quite believe that we are all sitting here in this room. I didn't really think it would, would happen. Um, I really wanted to start off just by reminding ourselves of, of why we're here and what we're doing. Uh, Bill's already reminded us of some of the central issues of the programme, but I also want to actually outline you know, how the programme is organised and what we hope that it will accomplish. Um, as we've already said, this programme focuses on two key, I think, policy and media issues, that of internet safety and internet security. Now, I know it's unusual to put the two of these together. Often they're regarded very much, if you like, on their own, but we felt there was actually quite a lot to be gained by considering these two in the one conference, that both in terms of the experience of legislators, law enforcers, NGOs and users, there might be lessons to be learnt by discussing the two in the one forum. So that's one of the rationales for picking these two topics in this particular conference. Also, as we've already said, um, there's clearly uh, a strong rationale, we feel, for addressing these in an inclusive, cross-sector and multidisciplinary environment, which is what we have here in this room today. Um, there is clearly a need for very focused uh, research and expert meetings where, say, child safety practitioners or law enforcement agencies come together within their own groups to look at their own research and experience. But we think that there are some pretty important lessons to be learned from having a dialogue across sectors, across interest groups. I mean, I know New Labour would use that horrible word, stakeholders, but uh, I think they're going down. So we won't use that word, all joined up thinking, but, but that's sort of what we're doing. <laughs> um, so one of my main aims really in organising this conference was to do what my role at the OII is about, which is linking up academic research with other communities, with industry, with government, with NGOs, with users. And that's, that's one of the aims of this conference, if you like, from the procedural point of view. On the substantive side, though, um, obviously we wanted to take a particular focus, a particular topic, and we've picked the value conflicts and trade-offs that surround these issues of online safety and network security not because we want to be negative, not because we feel a need as academics to make things more complicated, but because we feel actually that these are often ignored. As Bill said, there is a tendency, both in industry, government, media, etc., to either on the one hand ignore the darker side or to sensationalize it, rather than to take time to look at the complexities, to look at the issues. And so for that reason, we've picked this focus, the value conflicts and trade-offs, which we think are deliberately and, and explicitly very hard to understand, but very interesting and fruitful for us to look at. Um, we're not being just academic about this, though. We want to come away with some sort of lessons. So as well as looking at the complexities, we obviously want to find fruitful ways to take things forward. So we're keen to learn lessons where people are either engaged in dealing with these value conflicts and trade-offs on a daily basis, have lessons that work, or equally want to highlight problems they've experienced so that others can learn from those. So the substantive aim is twofold, as I said, to both highlight and understand these complexities, but also to find ways of moving beyond them. There'll be four sets of breakout sessions, and I think five sets of plenary sessions. Um, we will have a rapporteur from the OII in all plenary sessions. One of the aims of this is to produce, at the end of this, some sort of policy document, which we hope to be able to deliver to you within one or two months. I'm not going to make promises about deadlines, but certainly not in the too distant future after this conference. So we'll have an OIA rapporteur in all plenary sessions. In the breakout sessions, which there will be three at a time, it's clearly up to you which one you attend at any particular point. You can even, if you want to, flick between more than one and a go. But obviously, I would recommend that you try and stay put, because I think that it's important uh, to try and keep sort of dialogue and flow going, if we possibly can do that. Um, on the programme, it should explain to you where breakout sessions are located. If you have any questions, though, please ask our staff at reception. We are, though, using, I think, this lecture theatre, the Edward Saffra, which is next door, and seminar room A, which you need to go back through the lobby to access. I think it's on the right-hand side of the lobby. But as I say, do ask our staff if you need to know where things are. Um, the other issue, obviously, is papers. We have had a fantastic submission uh, of papers. We asked for papers back in, I think, November last year, and we had, I think, more than 70 or 80, of which we selected, I think, the best 35 or 36 to be offered at this conference. When you attend the breakout sessions, there will be papers available for you to collect in hard copy, and we will probably be putting most of those on our website next week. Some people I know said they don't want their papers to be made available for copyright reasons, but otherwise all papers will be available for download from the OIR website next week. Um, so that covers, if you like, the procedural and the substantive side of things. And I really just wanted just to take a couple of minutes just to hear from um, somebody the Vice Chancellor has already mentioned, John Hosking. Um, John and Liz, uh, as the Vice Chancellor explained, previously organised two conferences on this subject in New Zealand. 
and they are the reason that we are here doing this today. If it hadn't been for their approach, we'd probably be doing a conference on some other topic, I'm sure, but, but it, was, it was their sort of idea and their focus, and we're very grateful for that. So Liz is an extremely impressive person. Actually, can you stand up, because you're not going to speak. Just wave or something. Yeah, Liz, Liz Butterfield, thank you. Liz is an extremely impressive person uh, who's long been motivated, I think, by determination to protect children from the darker side of the internet, but at the same time also to encourage positive use from this technology, which can offer so much. Um, she's founder and director of the Internet Safety Group in New Zealand, and she worked long and hard with John Hosking, who we've also already heard about. He was a presumably extremely busy and overworked head of department uh, back at University of Auckland, but who between them put together these first two great conferences. So I'm just going to hand over to John briefly just to say a couple of words about what they did and, and why they're here. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, kia ora. I'll uh, leave you to ponder the irony of a social scientist uh, asking a computer scientist to give you a history lesson. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, history for a computer scientist is at least um, uh, not as old as, uh, as a historian. So uh, my, the origins of, uh, of uh, this conference date back to 1998, which is when the uh, Internet Safety Group in New Zealand was founded. Uh, this was founded by a number of people who were concerned at the vulnerability of children uh, when accessing the net, but uh, they rapidly realised that there were broader issues involved uh, in doing um, their activities. Now, what you've got to understand about New Zealand, and perhaps some of this has come through in uh, what's been said already, is that New Zealand is a two steps removed society. It's small enough that uh, rather than the normal five steps removed worldwide, you can get to anyone in two steps. So it was fairly uh, apparent, fairly quickly, that um, Internet Safety Group uh, gathered together an impressive group of people across a broad range of New Zealand society, representing education, judiciary, police, ISPs, government, community groups of various sorts. But I'd particularly like to acknowledge Liz Butterfield and the efforts that, that she's put in, and also Claire Balfour and John McCarthy, who are sitting in the back row there for their efforts in uh, promoting Internet Safety Group uh, and their, their activities. One of the early things that they did was to develop an Internet Safety Kit, uh, which was, uh, as Vicky has said, an educative approach uh, to doing things, rather than uh, the more common at that stage uh, filtering approaches and uh, somewhat more negative approaches to uh, Internet safety issues. Uh, this was a kit that provided information to schools, principals, teachers, school trustees, students and parents about issues associated with accessing the internet. This was enormously successful. It had very broad penetration into uh, New Zealand schools and um, was very well received by uh, teachers, parents, uh, students alike. And I think uh, the success of that has led to a steady stream of people coming down to New Zealand to see what ISG has been up to uh, over the years. Now, as John uh, Hood mentioned, uh, Internet Safety Group approached the university uh, four years ago with the, uh, the plan to run a national and then an international conference. I remember the meeting a little bit differently from John. Um, as a school trustee for six years, uh, I made the mistake of uh, mentioning that I had some knowledge of the Internet Safety Group and their activities and making positive noises, which of course meant that when the dust cleared, I was the University of Auckland liaison purpose, a person for managing the partnership with the Internet Safety Group. Or to put it in uh, rugby analogy terms, as Howard Ward, the district police commander, said, uh, as the meeting finished, the Type 5 left the room and John was left holding the university ball. However, I was an, not an unwilling participant in this, and uh, I think uh, the partnership that uh, we had with Internet Safety Group, and which is now extended to Oxford, and the enormous number of other participants uh, that we have here uh, has been a very fruitful one. So as John mentioned, in 2002 we ran a national symposium uh, again, being two steps removed, we managed to get most of the key players from government, industry, um, education, and community groups in one room. Uh, 
Uh, we had judges, the Commissioner of Police, the Ombudsman, the Human Rights Commissioner, school principals. We even had the Girl Guides uh, represented. This was multi-themed, as this conference was, and an important uh, component of that was dialogue between the people involved in internet security, safety, um, in the home, at work, uh, at school, and also cross-cutting legal, ethical, cultural issues associated with that. That was successful. It was very important, I think, in creating a, an across-the-board understanding of issues. And to a greater, ex greater or lesser extent, it um, developed a national consensus in New Zealand on approaches to solving the issues that, uh, that were addressed there. Uh, Liz being Liz didn't allow us to rest on our laurels, laurels and was immediately pushing us into developing the International Conference, uh, which we hold in Auckland in 2003. Again, it was cross-themed and it had an important uh, uh, subtext of uh, cross-educating between groups to develop a common language of discourse. Again, this was very successful and since John's left, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the enormous uh, assistance that John as Vice-Chancellor provided in both uh, the symposium and conference. Uh, he's been uh, very motivational in putting the resources of University of Auckland uh, into both of those conferences. Uh, and also uh, providing the entree to uh, Bill, Vicky and the others here at Oxford uh, to develop the conference that we see today. Uh, the reason for choosing Oxford, apart from an obvious place to want to hold a conference, was that we had a very strong European attendance at the last conference. And it's very pleasing to see uh, many who were there at the last conference uh, back here this time. Uh, so Oxford was a natural place to uh, come and talk to and we were very grateful that Bill, Vicky and their colleagues took up the challenge uh, and uh, have, in grand fashion, uh, led us onto this uh, next conference where we are today. And as they say, uh, the rest is or is about to become history. So thank you. Back to Vicky.